Hello. First of all, thank you very much uh, to the organizers to invite, to invite me here. Um, today I would like to give you a lecture on the modern aspects of many body localization. And mostly I will focus on the perspective of the real space, where, for example, my particles are living, they hope, they interact with each other, and the Hilbert space structure, and the Hilbert space circuitity breaking, where each node of this graph, complicated graph, corresponds to one uh, configuration of the system in terms of, for example, uh, occupation numbers. So most of my lecture, because it's a school, will be uh, not original, it will be the overview of the modern literature since more or less 2010 on mid localization. If I have time, maybe I will cover uh, this uh, work as the relation between the real space and Hilbert space structure of this phenomenon, which is called many localization. Okay, with this, let me go to the outline of my talk, and it will be uh, separated in three main parts. The introductory part is really, really basic introduction to terminalization in classical and quantum isolated systems. Uh, I will just show you what are they and why we should be careful determining quantum terminalization. Then I will uh, tell you uh, what equipartition of a degrees of freedom will do here, and so why it's related to both of these, classical and quantum terminalization. And the last part of this uh, will be just related to uh, the question how to break this ergodicity and how the mini body localization works. In the main part of my talk, I will consider in more details what are these many body systems, uh, what is the definition of uh, many body quantum systems, and what is the definition of equipartition over degrees of freedom. I will, in, will introduce so called inverse participation ratio which was considered by uh, George Shlapnikov yesterday and uh, Boris Anschuller in their talks about MBL. And uh, ne next I will uh, switch to the so-called quantum terminalization in terms of terminalization of eigenstates, which is called eigenstate terminalization hypothesis, and return back to this point how to break this uh, terminalization hypothesis with all our knowledge we will, which we will uh, get by the time. And then I will show you the definitions of many body localization in terms of the Hilbert space and real space structure. If time permits, I will uh, just join, like uh, combine these two pictures together with one on, only one observer. Let me start. From the very beginning, what we know about the uh, terminalization in the isolated classical system is the following. Just take the glass of hot water, put the eyes, isolate the system, wait for long enough time, what do you expect to see? Of course, we expect to see that the melt, this, this ice will melt, and what you will have the glass of cool water where the temperature is more or less homogeneous across the center. How does it happen? In classical systems it's very simple, you should consider the chaotic system, for example the stadium billiard, you prepare the system in, in one state where all the particles were in the same place, but more or less was different. Uh, Velocities you see that they spread over the entire system. If I follow even uh, the, the, like the, the propagation of one classical particle, I immediately see that the trajectory spans entire Hilbert space available for the system. As soon as it's so, then uh, if I consider my quantum or my average uh, average uh, uh, um, uh, observable on their trajectory, classical trajectory, I immediately see that if I averaged long enough time and my trajectory spans entire Hilbert space, it's the same as averaging microcanonically over the phase space. It means that with time, my observable will terminalize to equilibrium. And the main two ingredients classically here are that my system is chaotic, so it means that I do not have additional Lagrange multipliers, symmetries, and so on. My system, it means, not fine-tuned, I can uh, robustly just perturb it. And second one, which was also important for classical chaos, was nonlinear dynamics, either in terms of equations or, like here, in terms of the boundary conditions. Now. If we go to the quantum mechanical evolution, we know from our Schrodinger equation that it's linear and unitary. It means that if we prepare our system in the pure state and evolve it in time, it will be still pure. What are we speaking about? It, 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 it cannot be thermal. It cannot be thermal. It's like density matrix is also in pure, it's always in pure state. But still, if I focus on, for example, this kind of the billiard, quantize it, I will see immediately that the wave function, eigenstate of this uh, billiard, is kind of ergodistically uh, spread over the entire phase space available. A partition of a degrees of freedom is there in terms of the uh, uh, space. 
So how, do how should I understand this? If I focus on the local observable, for example, I can prepare my system in this local part, and let it evolve, I will see, if I follow only this part, that uh, it will diffuse, it will propagate through the system, uh, and it will scramble over the non-local degrees of freedom, and if you want entangle with uh, other degrees of freedom, and what we will see, we will see to normalization. So it means that in terms of the quantum mechanics, still we have all the coherence as pure state, if we focus on the observable, which acts only on the part of the system, the rest part of the system can work as the bus for the subsystem A on which the observable A is acting at. Therefore, the generic question appears at this point. Whether this B subsystem work, can work as a bus for the, as, for the entire isolated system A plus B, so for the subsystem B, or oh, subsystem A, sorry, or in other words, does a generic quantum system terminalize under the unitary evolution? Of course, if the answer is yes, we have all this picture, a repartition of a degree of freedom on real space, terminalization of our observable to equilibrium value, uh, model if we prepare our wave packet, it will spread diffusively, and in addition, uh, if we're speaking about Hilbert space, even wave function in the Hilbert space will be more or less homogeneously statistically spread over the entire Hilbert space available. However, if the answer is no, then we don't have any more the sacred partition of a degree of freedom of the Hilbert space. Our wave function can be somewhere in some region, which is measure zero. We will not have spreading of the wave packet. If we prepare it, you see some evolution inside the packet, but wave packet is more or less stuck. We do not see either the uh, equal partition of a degree of freedom on real space, and therefore we do not expect to see any terminalization. We will see relaxation to some value. But this value will know about the initial state. We do not have the spreading of the wave packet. We remember that. And therefore I called it AGGE, Generalized Gibbs Ensemble, keeping in mind that we have some kind of the additional Lagrange multipliers. But as soon as we have this and this, our system remembers about its initial state. Then it's useful. We can use it for quantum memory, we can use it to describe uh, network dynamics, for example, how our brains work, and we can use it for quantum annealing in quantum computations. But in order to understand how to reach this point, we should understand how to break quantum ergodicity. And the first simplest example which we have in mind from classical uh, chaos is the following. Let's just consider classical integrable system and quantize it. For example, this circular BDR. Then we know that the degrees of freedom are uh, separated, the angular momentum is separated from the radial coordinate, and what we have is that we have the Visper and Gallery modes as the solutions. But you immediately see that no equal partition of a degree of freedom is states. This mode doesn't span over the entire available space. So the problem with these systems is that uh, they are fine-tuned. If I perturb it somehow, they are not robust. I will break this integrability. I will not conserve angular momentum. In. Therefore, as a next step, people consider, oh, can we find some more generic way how to break uh, quantum organicity? And they found it. So if we consider disorder, if we localize our system due to the interference effects like in Anderson localization, uh, which was uh, discussed by Jorah Slapnikov yesterday in long range systems, or by Boris Schuller in his talk, and we immediately see that it will not uh, spread over the entire available space. What am I speaking about? Ah, sorry, the third one, of course, uh, we can have some topologically protected modes, maybe not all of the modes will be uh, like uh, protected from ergodicity and terminalization, but for example, if we speak about uh, fractional hole effects with interactions, of the particles, we immediately see that these H modes, they are protected somehow. I will not cover this mode today. So I will focus on the middle part. And the middle part can be understood in a simple way. So we again consider these fermionic particles leaving their potential, which is disordered with a certain amplitude W, which can hop within the adjacent side and interact with each other. If the amplitude of the disorder is small enough, we have this picture of ergodicity, quantum ergodicity, terminalization, which I discussed two slides before. But if we crank up the disorder up, 
what we will see that this okay bluish line bluish uh, uh, area shows the many body wave function spread so we see immediately that uh, wave function spreads only around the initial states of my uh, fermions and i have localization and this transition between this state and this one is called many body localization many body because we have many particles interacting with each other localization because we have uh, like special uh, distribution which is inhomogeneous and related to initial state and two years ago it was given an Anzakers prize to Igor Alenier, Boris Altshuler who is here and David Hughes who are the confounders of this field of many body localization okay at this point this is the end of the basic introduction I'm ready to switch to the middle part of my talk and discuss what are the many body systems which I'm interested in. Okay, I'm interested in these systems, like I already discussed several times, which are isolated from their environment, so it means that they are quantum isolated systems, many body, strongly interacting that I cannot use uh, this uh, milk field approaches like in superconductivity or some other stuff. They should be generic. In the sense that any perturbations, tiny perturbations, can be included. Uh, it means that they are not bad times that's integrable or fine tuned somehow, and they are highly excited. The last one usually uh, is called as uh, infinite temperature of a terra. I don't like this this temperature concept here because it's not really temperature. We're speaking about uh, like mean energy of the state, initial state, which will be conserved during the evolution, uh, and we associate this mean quantum mechanical average over the initial state, many body state, with a certain entropy, oh sorry, with a certain temperature just using the Gibbs formula for the energy. And therefore if we send uh, temperature to infinity it will correspond to the middle of the spectrum, where the most of the states of the many body system live. If we are speaking about many body, so it means that we should consider the number of particles or quasi particles living on the sides growing with the system size if we increase our system. So it, it doesn't mean that we consider just four particles and increase the system size. We should consider the number of particles uh, growing with the system size linearly or in other words filling factor to be finite. And we will focus on the thermodynamic limit L going to infinity. As soon as we have this many body and interacting, we should consider our system in terms of the many body space which is called Hilbert space. What does it mean? It means that at each side we have at least two degrees of freedom. This side can be empty, like this one, or full, occupied, like this one. Now, in order to characterize the state of the system, we should have the basis of these bit strings, zeros and ones, and each of them will provide the two degrees of freedom. It means that the number of entire number of degrees of freedom scales exponentially. For example, on this fermionic example, it's just two to the L, L is the number of sides. And if I would like to characterize this system throughout, I should consider the Hilbert space, which is uh, like given if we do not uh, conserve the number of particles, as given by the hypercube in this sense, where each vertex just provides us one of these bit strings. For example, this is plotted for four uh, sides, and this uh, is just uh, one uh, fermion on the third side. This is uh, correspond. This corresponds to three fermions on the second, third, and fourth sides. And the links, they correspond to the acts, actions of the Hamiltonian on these vertices. Okay, now we have not one, but two spaces, Hilbert space and real space. And we have equipartition of a degree of freedom in both. What does it mean to have equipartition of a degree of freedom quantum in quantum mechanical isolated many body systems? What should be the answer? In which space should we consider? The answer, of course, should be in the Hilbert space because this corresponds to the, our full definition and full description of our many body system. What should we consider? We should take the eigenstate of our Hamiltonian and expand it over a certain many body basis. For example, it can be the basis of the uh, occupation numbers, these B strings which we considered in the last slide. Then we have these coefficients, capital N of them, or 2 to the L, which are, of course, normalized. And if we're speaking about uh, equipartition over degrees of freedom, all of these coefficients should be the same order. As we have n, capital N of them, each of them in terms of the intensity is just goes as like, like, like 1 over n to 0. So it doesn't mean, so from the picture, you see that it doesn't mean that they are all the same. 
They are statistically the same in terms of the different prep factors, but they are the same in terms of the scaling. If I increase my system size, they all scale like one over n. In order to characterize it, quantify the separation of addictive freedom, usually people consider so-called inverse participation ratio, which is related to the number of sites of configurations occupied by my wave function. So what is this? It's just the generalization of normalization condition. Instead of the first moment of the wave function intensity, I consider the four of the qth moment. And unlike uh, normalization condition, it will scale somehow with the Hilbert space dimension with a certain Q-dependent factor, which is 1 minus Q times DQ, where DQ is called fractal dimension. Now let's just substitute this expression to this IPR, definition of IPR. We have n capital uh, elements, and each of them is just Q of power of n, 1 over n. So it means that you immediately see that here, the power is 1 minus Q times 1. Fractal dimension is 1. So it means that our wave function occupies n to the power 1 number of configurations, which is the entire Hilbert space, or at least its finite fraction. If, on the other hand, I focus on some other limiting case, for example, I consider the wave function which occupies only a few, for example, one configuration. So I just uh, take my wave function and say, oh, it's just one bin string. Then, of course, I have only few non-zero elements which are of order of 1 due to normalization. And if I raise them to any power q, what I will have, I will have that this sum will not depend on n, and means that dq should be 0. Which corresponds to the fact that n to the power 0 is number of configurations occupied by this wave function. Okay, so far so good. In order to understand what is uh, a compartition of a degree of freedom here, it's just dq equal to 1. But numerically, if you start to solve it, of course, everything which is written here is in thermodynamic limit, and it means that I neglected all the three factors. But I mentioned already that uh, in, in our systems we can reach only L of order of 24, something like this. And if you plot it for different system sizes, like from black to uh, red and then to green, increasing system size, you see that the fractal dimension dq as a function of energy grows up. And in this sense, in order to understand that it's in the term dynamic limit will be uh, equal to 1, you should either take into account the prep factors or extrapolate somehow these this curves, and you will see that it will go to 1. In this sense, this is a partition over all degrees of freedom in their Hilbert space. So far, so good. Now we can return back to our definition of uh, thermalization uh, in classical systems. What we had there, we had that our observable was averaged over the long times, over the trajectory, in our case, over the time evolution, if you want. And then we end up being in the acre partition uh, over the degree of freedom, and we equilibrate in the microcanonical sense. Now we can do the same, right? What we need to do, we have our observable, we have our initial state, we know how to evolve this initial state in time, it will be still pure state in terms of the density matrix, but now we are not interested in the entire Hilbert space, we are interested only in a system, we are interested only in the subsystem to which our observable acts from. And it means that we are not interested in the entire uh, density matrix, only in their reduced one of the subsystem, subsystem A. We can average our, out the degrees of freedom of subsystem B. And immediately we can see, we can have that our uh, state is not pure from the very beginning, or due to their time evolution, it will not be any more pure. And we can thermalize even in terms of this reduced density matrix. Or, if we're interested in our observable, we can just consider this usual quantum mechanical average of, of, of as trace over a degrees of freedom, rho a of t a. Knowing this, what we can do, we can just say, oh, now we have the observable as a function of time, which is scalar anymore, not uh, operator anymore. We can average it over a long time, and in order to describe the equipartition of a degrees of freedom, we just say, oh, oh sorry, terminalization, we just say, oh, this guy should go with increasing time to their equilibrium. For example, to the Gibbs ensemble equilibrium, or microcanonical ensemble equilibrium. Uh, equilibrium can be Gibbs distribution. This is the definition of thermalization, quantum thermalization in terms of local observables.
How to reach it? Which properties of the observable or eigenstates should I take into account? In order to understand this, so I just uh, repeat this uh, observable average over time and this time evolved <coughs> density matrix, I should uh, expand my initial state over the eigenstates of the Hamiltonian. And then if you want, I just encode all the information about the initial state into this coefficient CA. And another thing which I'm uh, interested in, I'm interested in the microcanonical ensemble. In a sense, if you want, I just prepared my particles, uh, quantum particles far away from each other. They are not interacting far away from each other. They are nearly classical. And uh, I prepare a classical state and push them together. In some sense, I prepared them in their well-defined energy. And I, when I push them together, more or less this energy spread, a little bit spreads. And then I see that in small interval of energies, I have uh, this superposition. Fine. Now, with this, of course, I can determine what should be my uh, energy in terms of microcanonical ensemble, what should be my equilibrium uh, value of the observable in this microcanonical ensemble. All of them, both of them, should be related just to the summation, uh, equipartite summation over all these uh, eigenstates here. And I will also use this definition for the uh, coefficients of the eigenstates in the eigenstate basis of my observable. Now, what can I do this here? I can just substitute this quantum mechanical average in terms of the initial state and time evolved, right? In time, I just set, set here the exponent e to minus i e a t and just consider what are the terms here. The terms will be one term, which is time independent, diagonal term, and the ones which are time dependent, sorry, a should be not equal to b, uh, which I integrate over time. And then I have this e to i E B minus E A times T, and uh, here at this point I assume, and this is exactly the robustness of my system, that I do not have any de 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 uh, degeneracies in the spectrum because I can get rid of them just by the the perturbation. As soon as I have no divergences, sorry, de degeneracies, then immediately this integral will go to zero as soon as A is not equal to B. And at long times, I will end up having only this term. So it means that my observable average over time will relax to some value. But for a moment, this value depends on the initial conditions through these coefficients, which encode the initial condition. The question how to get rid of these coefficients, what should we do with these coefficients AAA, sorry about this notation, diagonal coefficients of the operator and the eigen basis, in order to uh, have the same uh, equilibrium value here, doesn't matter what coefficients we are choosing in the initial state. And in order to have this, let me just plot numerically what is this uh, diagonal element as a function of energy. And you see, they, they form really a smooth function as a function of energy, with fluctuations which are exponentially small in the system size. They are polynomially small in the Hilbert space dimension. As soon as we are interested in the small interval of energies here, these fluctuations are really tiny. I do not have this smooth function anymore. This delta is much smaller than the length scale uh, energy scale at which our smooth function changes. It means that all these diagonal elements in this small interval are the same. What I can do? I can just take them out of the sum, and this sum will be just normalization condition. I immediately relax to the coefficient AAA of any state in this interval. And I can do the same with the microcanonical average, because these coefficients are just the same. This is called eigenstate terminalization hypothesis, or if you want terminalization in terms of eigenstates. How you can see it, 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 you see that equilibrium value is the same for all the eigenstates in their certain microcanonical window, small, uh, around small, uh, small uh, vicinity of energy. And our observable at long times goes exactly to the same. Any of these eigenstates will show you the same value of observables. For more mathematically oriented people who, are, who would like to, to dig a little bit more into it, this eigenstate terminalization hypothesis developed in the 90s reads as follows. You have not only this 
diagonal elements which are smooth function of 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 uh, energy you have also fluctuations which are dying of like uh, the square root of the Hilbert space dimension they have random fluctuations and they have uh, the response function in terms of the fluctuation dissipation theory so which depends on the energy uh, between this uh, energy difference between these uh, two elements here okay so far so good then uh, let me uh, just uh, tell you in more details how to break this quantum mechanicity. Now we can understand it. Because if we can break this value, like this action, we cannot take all this, uh, of them out from the sum, we will break quantum terminization. Let me show you how it works in terms of this integrability and disorder cases. So what we already understood if this AAA is small function of energy, then we can take it out in terms of this microcanonical distribution. If we consider integrability, what do we expect? We expect that this guy depends not only on energy, or the only integral of motion for the uh, uh, chaotic quantum system. Now we will have more integrals of motion, or if you want more Le Legendre uh, multipliers, and we plot it as a function on, of only one energy. What we expect to see? We expect to see bands of these smooth functions. And we indeed see them. If we don't hear about uh, multipliers, you immediately see that, okay, I can uh, limit myself to small energy interval, but this will not limit my A, 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 in their small interval of uh, values. I cannot get rid of this guy in the sum, and it means that I will depend on the initial conditions, and we know how because we know that these are multipliers, Lagrange multiplier. If we go to the disordered systems and many body localization, what do you see? You see some kind of this similar uh, kind of structure in terms of the bands, but now they are disordered. And so this is just one realization of disorder. And uh, what is the problem? It, it looks similar, but we just don't know what are these integrals of motion. They are different for different realizations. And in this sense, many body localization is the emergent integrability. It's the general way to, uh, to break quantum integrability and its emergent integrability. Therefore, in the last uh, parts of this talk, I uh, will just uh, tell you how to understand this emergent integrability in more details. Okay, what is many body localization in the hero space and what it is in there? real space. Let's start from the Hilbert space. We, we were speaking about a repetition of a degree of freedom and so we mentioned that oh so we can quantify it in terms of the inverse participation ratio, uh, ergodic states correspond to d equal to one, these are states which are very strange localized ones in the Hilbert space. Okay so far so good. How to characterize our many body localized states? And I will show you in a minute that you should characterize them in terms of the something in between uh, with non-integer dq, these states with dq between 0 and 1, and they are called multi-fractal states. Let me explain you why they are called so. They are fractal because if I take the wave function intensity, cut at a certain level, and consider what is happening with these configurations, what do they form as a fun, like uh, just plot them, I will see the fractal. Okay, maybe not geometrically, I'm a little bit cheating here, but in terms of the counting, if I count the number of configurations where the wave function intensity is of order of this cut, it will grow as the fractional power of the Hilbert space dimension. Fractional, therefore we have a fractal. This is the house of dimension. Now, wh why they are multi-fractal? Now, if I change this cutoff level, it's parameterized by alpha, but it's not very important, if I change the cutoff level, what can happen is that if I count the number of uh, configurations, this power, D, can be alpha dependent. I can have different fractals with different house of dimensions. And therefore, I cannot characterize my uh, complicated wave function with many peaks in the background as the, with a single fractal. I need multiple of them, and therefore, these states are called multi fractal states. 
Why it is, uh, okay, these states are relevant not only in, in many body localization. They are relevant for uh, like enhancement of superconductivity. They are relevant for uh, quantum annealing or like uh, population transfer there. I will not speak about this here. Let me just give you the, the understanding why many body localized states are of this kind. What we have in real space, we have their particles living on the sides and each of them is many body so many body wave function, each of them is localized in a certain interval of size psi. Then I have this number of particles growing with the system size linearly with a certain filling factor. Let's assume that psi is not very big and the filling factor is not very big, then I can forget about the overlap of this wave function. How many configurations in terms of my, my uh, occupation number, bit strings, will uh, be available for this wave function. It will be just psi to the power m. m is the number of particles. If I substitute everything here, just substitute the 2 to the l, it's just the Hilbert space dimension, I immediately see that I have their finite power here, new logarithm of 2, not logarithm base 2 of psi. And this is the fractal dimension, which is finite. It's not localized as we saw in, in Boris' talk yesterday, it's finite. And this is because we consider the infinite temperature or like mid-spectrum states. Okay, so we understood that. So, and of course, and this transition, which we, we, we see as the many body localization transition, shows us in the function of the disorder that we undergo the transition from ergodicity, TQ equal to one, thermal one, to something with the jump to some fractal dimension, which is finite which the case is 1 over w here, more or less, but uh, even with the jump, what we see is not jumps to zero. It's not the final state of it. So this brings us to the situation that uh, many body localization is just ergodicity breaking in terms of their Hilbert space dimension. What about the structure in real space? What we're speaking about? We're speaking about some Hamiltonian, for example, of this kind, where we have on-site energies which are random, interaction of adjusted sites, and hopping between adjusted sites. In terms of fermions, it's written in terms of fermions. Let me consider two limiting cases. Let me get rid first of, of, of uh, hopping terms, then my Hamiltonian is already diagonal in the basis of occupation numbers, and these occupation number bead strings are eigenstates. Energies are just given by the fact that uh, I just replace my coefficients, my operators by coefficients n k, which are 0, 1. I immediately see that I have local integrals of motion, which are these occupation numbers of each side, which commute with each other and with Hamiltonian, and in which sense uh, the, the uh, uh, eigenstate is given by the uh, bead string, or like the, the power, the, the selective determinant of these orbitals, if you want. If now instead I get rid of the interaction, I end up in the model, for example 1D for simplicity, with this order of on-site and hopping between adjusted sites. I can solve it separately for each single particle because they are not interacting. This is just Anderson localization in 1D. And I know eigenstates, single particle eigenstates, they are just exponentially localized with respect to some side, which, is, uh, which corresponds to the energy. Now, in order to form many body wave function, I will just, again, populate these orbitals. And now the, the uh, again, energy even just given by the sum over the single particle energies. You see, again, I have local integrals of motion. Now they are not completely local, but exponentially decay. I form the same wave function as a slightly determinant out of them. And this local uh, observable local uh, intervals of motion, they commute with the Hamiltonian and with the charm. Now, what do we expect if we take into account everything, both hoppings, interaction, disorder? We expect to see the following. We, in two limiting cases, we have already a local integrals of motion. Maybe, starting with from one of these pictures, we can just say, oh, it's just a local transformation, unitary transformation, which uh, brings us from one set of local integrals of motion to some middle ones and to the other ones. And this is called uh, the set of local integrals of motion. This was suggested in 2014, and uh, like you can look into this review for this. 
uh, and was even mathematically proven for one model, which is quantum uh, easing or in transverse field, uh, which is random. Right? So it's by mathematician John Ing. Fine. What is this about? Is that we take these integrals of motion without hopping terms and try, try to dress them some, with some local transformation. We just take this n and apply some unitary which is local. In which sense it's local? It means that it's mostly the same operator with some additional uh, terms which I do not write explicitly, which I exponentially decay with the distance and with uh, number of operators here. I just uh, write down the single particle operator, but it doesn't matter. All of them mean this. And I, I, I try to find the coefficients for these uh, additional guys in such a way to make them uh, commuting with the Hamiltonian and with each other. And having just normalized them, having the just uh, two elements zero or two eigenvalues zero and one. But this is just normalization. These tau are local integrals of motion. They are integrals of motion because they commute with the Hamiltonian and with each other. And they are local because the coefficients are small with respect to time, with respect to the distance exponential. Moreover, uh, so it means that many body localization is indeed emergent integrability here, and then we can understand why it is uh, a uh, generalized Gibbs ensemble, the value to which we relax to. Because we have local integrals of motion, which will depend, of course, on the realization of the disorder here, hopping term. For each realization, the, the set will be different, but they will form the full basis of all of the integrals of motion. So we found only L of them. As a number of sides, and we should find two to the L of them. L of them are local, both in real and Hilbert space. If we would like to find, form the entire full basis of operators, we should uh, consider again analog of, of the slatter determinant, if you want, but in operative sense, just the powers of them, where the powers are just bit strings. And you see from this construction that as soon as each of k's can be 0 and 1, you can construct two to the L of them. They are non-local, so except the ones where uh, each k is just a form of one, just one. And you can rewrite Hamiltonian just in terms of these local integrals of motion, it will be diagonal there, because it commutes with the, with the uh, uh, Hamiltonian with each other, and all of them, they form the full basis. With these uh, coefficients which decay exponentially like these ones, and you will find that uh, you can, from this phenomenological uh, description of many body localization, you can find that, uh, for example, the information will spread only logarithmically in time, if you want uh, uh, entanglement entropy. Uh, you will find how the observables will decay in time and how, uh, so you will see the agency thermalization hypothesis, uh, how it, it will be broken. And you can describe it very well. Just uh, I refer to, to, to this uh, uh, review, for example, like it's already four years ago. Let me finish now, I'm uh, running out of time. Uh, sorry about that, sorry about being late. Let me just finish in the last two slides um, with experiments on minimal localization. Most of the experiments and the minimal localization are done in ultra cold atoms. Because for this uh, phenomenon, we need to isolate our system from the environment. And this environment usually in solid state is phonons and we cannot free them out. We consider ultra cold atoms. What we can do in the first paper, uh, 2015, just like, one year after this concept of local integrals of motion, people did the following. They occupied each even side of the optical lattice, which is slightly, uh, you see, slightly uh, disordered by ultra cold atoms, bosonic one, as far as I remember, and they let them evolve and then measure where they will end up. And they measure the so called imbalance, which is the number of all the even sides minus the number on, on, on odd sides. And you see that as a function of disorder, which is delta here, sorry about it, it's a different notation, as soon as delta is zero, you relax to the equilibrium where value where both of even and odd sides, you have the same occupation. While as soon as you crank up the disorder amplitude, you see that more and more you see this imbalance, more you see the uh, weight uh, still on the even sides where I prepared it. More and more I see the memory. In 2D, you can also do this uh, in finite systems. You can do this uh, with real disorder. Here it was just quasi-periodic one. You see it from the dashes, dashes here. Here, they consider the, really the speckle glass and they projected the laser 
uh, with a speckle. So it's like, would they prepare the domain wall? One realization, average over realizations in the ergodic sense, no disorder delta is zero. You see that after some time, it will spread more or less homogeneously over the entire cloud available. If I crank up the disorder, now it's uh, large enough, 13 of uh, hopping strands, you see that in one realization and many realizations, it, it doesn't propagate much to the other side. It still preserves information. And in other experiments, they even considered the transport and uh, uh, just transport distance grows in time only logarithmically or power law like here, uh, depending on, on, on uh, what we have. Okay, so with this, sorry, I do not have time for the original part. Um, and I will be glad to answer your questions. Thank you very much.